We are here at the Barrel Elites Conference in New York City, and I'd like to welcome Ruben Falk from Amazon Web Services. Ruben, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Great. So to get things started, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for Amazon Web Services? Yeah, I sit in the capital markets uh, specialist team. So we're a team of industry experts that help our clients connect um, business problems with our technology solutions. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we're hearing a lot about all this new tech coming up, which is AI and so on. Can you tell us a few use cases which you actually deploy with yeah. clients? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So some of the more popular use cases are in the area of client service, right? So think you're having a conversation with a client and the AI is listening into the conversation and is generating queries against the knowledge base from the conversation. And then as the agent or the wealth manager, you can now get articles and summaries of those articles brought up as part of the, the conversation. You can potentially relay uh, those summaries to the client if you think they're relevant, right? So think about it as sort of playing chess with Kasparov, whispering in your ears. That's one use case. Another use case is just sort of research assistance, right? So you're doing numerical research or you're doing qualitative research. And with generative AI, you're able to access all this information much more easily, much more speedily, uh, including, you know, you know that these models are not good at math, but it'll translate natural language questions into code, execute that code, bring back dashboards or numerical uh, information in table form and so forth, right? So you can use it for both numerical and qualitative research, and you can access much more information much more quickly uh, than otherwise you would have been able to. And lastly, there are a lot of use cases around uh, structured data, so extracting structured data from unstructured text and being able to do that much more easily now with generative AI. So now we can have new data sources that can be used either for quant uh, investment processes or for more traditional uh, discretionary processes with data that otherwise wouldn't have been accessible. Excellent. Now, with all this new technology and the power we have in technology, and it comes down to applicability, right? Can you walk us through from a proof of concept to final deployment, what are the challenges you face in actually implementing such technologies? So in the first year, the focus was on sort of reacting to these top-down mandates that was coming down from the board, from the CXO level, of you've got to do something with generative AI because generative AI may be moving around the competitive moats of the industry and we can't be left behind, right? And so the first year, the focus was on generating the POCs. The second year has been about turning those POCs into production. And we have lots of good examples like Bridgewater, NASDAQ, and others of large companies that have done so successfully. We also have lots of customers that are still in the process of turning those productions into, or those POCs into production. And so the challenges are things like accuracy, right? You may get, get a POC to 75% accuracy, but now how do you get it from 75 to say the high 90s, right? And so all that optimization, which is about using different search technology, which is about maybe fine tuning models, which is about how to uh, make your own data useful for these models. All of that is a new skill set that needs to be acquired experience that needs to be built. And so that's the process that we're in now. And that's taking time, but ultimately, uh, you know, our customers are getting them. Great. As you said, a lot of these technologies are new and there's a lot of changes happening rap rapidly, which means uh, we also need the guardrails to make sure we have the protections in place. Can you throw some light on anything related to regulations and compliance that we all need to be aware of? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, you know, the only regulation that's really taking effect yet for generative AI specifically is the, is the uh, EU AI Act. And so uh, that typically only applies to the large model vendors, and they're going to have to now provide uh, sources for all the data that their models are trained on, at least if they're being used in Europe. Uh, they also make certain use cases and that's true for the EU AI Act and for other jurisdictions, certain use cases are sort of out of bounds, right? You can't make hiring decisions based on AI. Uh, a lot, the other sort of compliance issues are more about how do you live up to your existing compliance obligations uh, you know, in the context of generative AI, right? And for that, uh, companies are having to establish AI policies uh, to allow them to distinguish between low risk and high risk use cases. They're also, for the high risk use cases, they're having to evolve their model risk management processes, right? Because now when you take a new Gen AI model to the risk management uh, committee, model risk management committee, it's now a different set of considerations that need to be looked at than for more, a more traditional machine learning model. So, so yes, I think all of these processes need to be evolved and I'm sure there's also gonna be more regulation uh, over time. Excellent. 
Thanks for those insights, Ruben. That's Ruben Park from Amazon Web Services, and we're here on the Barrel Conference in New York City. Thank you.